Alright guys, in the last video, we learned about one of the coolest things that we could do in Excel up to this point. Basically, we learned about the ability to create a dynamic formula, something like this. For the total value, we could take the quantity of whatever item and multiply it by the price and hit enter. And then when we grab the fill handle and drag it down, check it out. It automatically was smart enough to detect exactly what we were trying to do and it went through row by row and it used that formula to give us the perfect answer alright so that is pretty sweet so let me go ahead and use this for something else I know that the tax of I don't know like the tax rate is 7 percent so 0 0.07 so now what I'm gonna do is find the tax of each item so let me make a new column tax and okay so what did I do here? I'm gonna make equal sign for a formula and I know the tax of each item is the price of that item and we multiply it by the tax 0.07 everything looks good to go alright sweet so the tax if you bought some bread gloves you would have to pay a dollar and sixty one cents alright man this is nice so let me just go ahead and fill this in and uh... what the heck is this crap I thought that uh wait a minute okay it's working right here but why the heck is it not working there okay I see what's going on now see what happened in this case is in this example right here Excel detected that this multiplied by this was equal to this so on the next row whenever we filled it in it assumed this multiplied by this was equal to this in other words it shifted down one row each time so in this case what it's doing is it's taking this multiply or excuse me this multiplied by this and gave us our answer however when we shift down not only does it shift down the price but it also shifts down this cell as well so instead of just using this 0.07 like before it actually is going down one row and looking for some number right here now of course we don't have any number right there so that's why we're getting this little error right here and you can see if you actually click on it it's trying to reference B18 which is empty now that's obviously not what we want so let's go ahead and hit control Z control Z control Z cancel out of there and I'll show you guys how to set up a different type of cell in other words how to reference cells in a different kind of way so basically what we need to tell Excel in everyday human language is whenever we use our formula this piece of data is going to be changing the price on each row but the cell we're referencing in other words the tax is going to stay the same so you don't need to shift down right here so what you can do is start typing in the formula just like you did before so the tax is equal to the price of each row multiplied by the tax okay simple enough however hold on let me shift around in my chair right here however instead of just referencing this row right here we're gonna add some cool symbols to it the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a dollar sign before the B and a dollar sign before the number right there before the row number now hit enter and okay we got the same result as before however hover your cursor over to the fill handle and drag down and check it out it now completes our equation and it did it perfectly so what the heck were those dollar symbol symbols and why did it cause our formula to work well those dollar symbols right here are basically telling cell not to change the cell or the reference in that formula the dollar symbols mean absolute value in other words what we're basically telling it in this formula is okay you're going to be working with two parts the first part is going to be dynamic it's going to change the part with the dollar cells or excuse me the dollar signs it's going to stay the same so whenever we fill it in don't move this cell down keep the value or the reference to B17 for every single equation alright pretty sweet now the dollar sign actually means don't move this part of the equation so we actually can have something like this dollar sign B 
and then nothing before the 17. And what this would mean is, okay, B is going to stay the same. So the column is going to be an absolute reference, but the row is going to be dynamic. And actually, you don't see that that often, but I just want to point it out um, so you guys know what's going on. So again, that is the difference between how you reference cells, either absolute or dynamic. And another thing that's really cool, let me go ahead and delete all those, is this. If you ever want to um, reference a cell really easy and you don't feel like typing in all those dollar signs, a cool little shortcut that you can do is you can type, let's create the same equation we just created. So we're going to use C3, which is going to be dynamic, and we're going to multiply it by the tax value of 7%. Now after we click a cell that we want to reference, whenever we want to reference it in a different kind of way, in other words, the absolute value, if you hit F4 on your keyboard, it cycles through the different types of ways you can reference it. So of course the default one means totally dynamic as well. It's going to try to shift that one down. If you hit it one more time, then it's completely absolute. And of course the other ones are mixed. So this means that the row is going to be absolute, but the column is going to be dynamic. And this one means the column's absolute and the row's dynamic. But of course, that's the one we're looking for right there. And now we can just drag it like before. Boom, roasted. Pretty stinking sweet. So, I mean, I think that's all I have to cover for this tutorial. And actually, let me show you guys one other thing since I have some time. This is actually pretty cool. Now, we know that we can reference cells in a bunch of ways. We can either use their nickname, we can use the address such as C3, we can use the address such as B17 and tell them we want to um, treat it as an absolute reference in our formulas, but did you know that you can actually reference cells in other worksheets? So let's go ahead and move to a new worksheet and of course we now have sheet 2 and sheet 1. So let's say that we wanted to create an equation in sheet 2 and we wanted to reference one of the cells in, I don't know, I'll just reference bread gloves because it's the easiest. So the address of bread gloves is A3. So remember that. So if we go to sheet two, and it already started trying to do it for me because I don't know, it's a little bit smarter than we are right now, but we'll fix that. We're uh, catching up to it. So set it equal to, and it's actually a two part um, thing we need to remember. Sheet one, the first part is the sheet name, and now separate it with an exclamation mark or explanation point, if you want to call it. And after that, put the cell address, so A3. So what this means is I'm going to reference a cell A3, and it's in sheet 1. So now hit enter, and of course it gives you the value of bread gloves. So that's when, if you ever want to reference a cell in another sheet, just type the name of that sheet this symbol after it and the address of that cell so pretty cool and um, of course if this was a number which it's not you can like take the price of it plus 10 or whatever but of course since we're trying to add the word bread gloves and the value 10 that's where we get the error so for now hope you guys learned some cool things in other words how to reference cells if you don't quite understand and I know it's kind of a hard um, concept to understand at first, then ask me on my forum and I'll write a little explanation of what dynamic, mixed, and absolute means. And it may actually be easier to see if you're looking at it like on a table or something. But for now, as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next video.